Hey there everyone, Professor Yui here. In today's video, we'll be looking at the latest chapter, chapter 996. There's going to be spoilers ahead, so make sure you've read the chapter before watching. Well then, let's get straight into it. Otama Otama came to Nami and Usopp's rescue in the last chapter, and how she came to Onigashima, which was a mystery, has now been answered. She came by by getting the enemy to bring her along with their ship. She didn't sneak in and hide, the enemy brought her along, and that means she used her ability. For those of you who forgot, her ability is to create Kibidango, which she uses to control animals, and incidentally smile users, by plucking them out of her cheeks. So she must have fed the smile users on the ship, and asked them to take her to Onigashima. She brought along with her Komachio, who we saw in the last chapter, and Hihimaru. Hihimaru then fought page 1, holding him and Ulti off, while Komachio ran away carrying Usopp, Nami, and Otama on its back. While running away, Otama said something quite interesting to Nami, that they came to Onigashima as samurais. Otama's dream and promise to Ace is to become a first-rate kunoichi, so why did she say they came as samurais? There are some theories pointing towards Otama being Hiyori's daughter, and I think this statement might be a foreshadowing towards that. She does have deep ties to the Kozukis, and the fact that she calls herself a samurai now might just be the connection needed to establish her as Hiyori's daughter. It's still pretty out there however, so I guess we'll just have to see. Yamato's ability so Yamato, who's protecting Shinobu and Momonosuke, is getting bombarded heavily by Sasaki and his squad. Shinobu asked Yamato to abandon her and get Momonosuke out of here, but she refused, saying Odem would never do such a thing. Up to this point, Sasaki has left his squad to fight Yamato, but he's finally decided to face Yamato himself, drawing his sword. Seeing Sasaki stepping up, drawing his sword, Yamato used what I assume is her ability. We can't see whose face it is at all in this panel, but judging from the shape of the jaw and the hair, I think it's definitely Yamato using her ability. Her teeth grew into sharp fangs, and she made an animal-like growl, which means she's definitely a zone type devil fruit user, and it's most likely an ancient zone type, such as a dinosaur. I would have loved to see what she turns into, but her transformation was interrupted by Hacha, who came in and destroyed the floor. As she was falling though, Yamato unleashed a fierce move that knocked Hacha out in one hit, called Ringing Arrow. It's a move that fires out a pressurized air blast that is imbued with Haki, and she might have used Ryuo, which would explain how she knocked Hacha out in one hit. Yamato has previously used Kaido's Thunder Bagua, so I think Kaido can probably use Ringing Arrow too. Thanks to this whole intervention by Hacha, Yamato was able to rescue Shinobu and Momonosuke, and she said something important to Momonosuke as they were running away. She said that Momonosuke is the one who will guide the world to its dawn. The dawn here of course, being Momonosuke opening Wano's waters that will lead to the reveal of the truth of the world. Yamato knows how important Momonosuke is, and she must have known this fact from reading Oden's journal. Trafalgar D Water Law Whilst everyone was wreaking havoc in different parts of Onigashima, Law was doing his own thing, and we see him looking at a poneglyph this chapter. He was looking for the meaning of his destiny, of water and D that's in his name. Only a few people know that Law is a D, and Robin, the only person who can read poneglyphs, became one of them. Apparently, what he's looking for can only be found on a red poneglyph, however, and what he found was not a red poneglyph. Even though it's not a red one though, this poneglyph should still contain some information and history about the past. For all we know, it might even be part of the Rio poneglyph. We'll just have to wait and see until Robin actually reads it. The Rooftop Aside from Luffy and Co, Kid and Killer are also heading towards Kaido on the rooftop. He's forcing his way through to the rooftop while collecting and carrying all the scrap and weapons inside the castle using his ability. Since this castle is the home base of one of the most feared pirate crews in the world, it's definitely filled with a buttload of weapons and this definitely plays into Kid's favour. Meanwhile on the rooftop, Kaido appears to be finally getting serious in his human form. 
completely demolishing the scabbards. The past few chapters gave us the hope that maybe the scabbards can do some significant damage against Kaido, but alas, they don't seem to even stand a chance, and Kaido probably hasn't even gone all out yet. But then again, this is kind of expected, since Oden couldn't beat Kaido 20 years ago, and also since Kaido is called the strongest creature in the world. Really makes you think, how would Luffy beat him? Anyways, going back to the chaos on the live floor, we see Big Mom heading towards the rooftop, saying she has business above where Kaido is. This line that she said is quite interesting, and I think it has another meaning behind it. If she really only wants to physically go to Kaido, she can just say she's heading to the rooftop or towards Kaido. Instead, she said above where Kaido is, and I think she means this not only physically, but also figuratively, in the sense that she wants to be above Kaido in the pirate world. She probably won't betray Kaido now in this arc, so she's probably planning on doing it after their alliance ends, after proving to the world that no one, not even the rising star of the pirate world, the Straw Hats, can. Orochi's back. So Luffy is heading to the rooftop together with Jinbei and Sanji. They're climbing up the stairs, going up to the third floor, where Sanji heard some voices and shuddered. Judging from the kya and the heart symbols on the chat bubbles, it's definitely a woman or women's voices, and it's definitely someone important. Many people think it's an Okama's voice, which would explain Sanji's reaction, but I don't think it is. I think the voices belong to a woman and a man, Orochi. Now, it's hard to tell in the English translation, but the line, we can do this much right, nufufu, is I think said by Orochi. In Japanese, the line is yoi de onaika, and this way of speech doesn't really belong to an Okama. It is the way of speech of someone high up in the social ladder, and it's a way of speech used by Orochi. I think we've all had a feeling that Orochi is not actually dead, so this is not out of the realm of possibility. Sanji wasn't present when Orochi lost his head, and we don't know if he knows that Orochi's dead, but if he does know, then that would explain his facial expression. If my assumptions are true, then Luffy would have to fight Orochi first, before getting to the rooftop. We're so close to chapter 1000, and there's definitely something special waiting for us in that chapter. Hopefully we can get there before 2021. Anyways, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, press the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. See you on the next video.